Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now, what if I told you almost everything you're looking at in front of you here is contrast? Well, maybe one or two little exceptions, and you'll see those as we go through the painting process. This fella here, he is from Ve Victus Miniatures. He is a 3D print, and their April release, so still available through Patreon and I think My Mini Factory for a couple of days, and then available on My Mini Factory for purchase afterwards, is this Mordheim themed warband set, and they've got more in the pipeline for that. So, Mordheim. Yes. Best, <laughs> best game Games Workshop has released, with the possible exception of Lord of the Rings strategy battle game, but that's a matter of opinion. Anyway, I'm getting off topic. Uh, painting this fellow has been a lot of fun, and almost everything you're looking at is contrast, with a little bit of highlight with ivory mixed in. So, I'll show you how I've done that. All of the paints will be listed in the description below. Let's get started. So once you've gone ahead and assembled your miniature, first thing to do, of course, is to prime it. Now here I have used Wraithbone from Citadel, but you could also use Brain Matter Beige from the Army Painter, or even a white. And the white itself is not going to matter. White primer is all the same, more or less. Uh, but my one suggestion is don't use a gray. Uh, something like Gray Sear or even Vallejo's Gray Primer. Uh, it will it will wash out the colors a little bit peculiarly, and it's not going to look as good. So Wraithbone, for once, is my my suggestion, but I would otherwise stick to a white or something like that. So as in most cases, we're going to start from the lowest layer on the miniature and work our way up. Basically, it's the easiest way of making sure we can tidy any mistakes as we go. So on this fella, that's going to be a skin. Now I want to give a quick shout out to the brush that I'm going to be using for most of this, this is the hobby base coating brush from the Army Painter. Now these are little synthetic brushes, but it keeps such a good tip, and I use this for applying contrast on pretty much anything. Uh, the only difference is when you get to really big areas, uh, the small size of the brush will make some uh, brush strokes visible, so you want to swap to something bigger then. But for the most part, this is really handy. So I'm going to go straight over his face with some Gilliman Flesh. And uh, you'll find it best at this stage to go over his hair as well. Unless you desperately want it to be blonde or something. Uh, just cover it with the skin tone because it's going to look way more natural if we're working from the same base coat for everything here. A little peculiar, but I swear there's a reason for this. Like I said, looks a little funny now, but I swear we're going somewhere with this. What I'm using now is snakebite leather, and this is a nice sort of middling generic fantasy brown. It's probably going to be easier to start from his back here, and I'm going to paint his trousers with this. I'm not too worried that they have a texture to them. Um, I'm going to use that to my advantage when it comes to painting his, uh, his top, his padded sort of vest thing he's wearing. But for his trousers, I figure, eh, they're not the star of the show. Let's just paint them brown. Now, of course, that won't take long, uh, but here we start to see some of the fuss that can come out of using contrast, and that's that I'm going to have to tidy as I go with a little bit of Wraithbone from the pot. Now, I'm not too worried about doing this, to be perfectly honest, because not only do I need this to tidy up intermittently on any little splashovers, but while priming him, you know, just right up under his arm here, I have missed a bit. So I'm going to go over that now, because... I'll be honest with you, I'm going to leave his shirt sleeves in Wraithbone before we shade them. So, any little bits of tidy up I need to do, and his arms now with Wraithbone. Now for this quilted chest piece, and to get a bit of yellow onto our Avalander here, I'm going to use Iandin Yellow. Now I'm going to go straight over the entire thing first. The only thing I really want to avoid is his equipment across his chest there. Because I know that later on, if I want to put any black onto this, it's going to cover way easier than trying to put yellow over black. Now on a shield, I do want to carry on that black and yellow theme. But instead here, I'm going to use Imperial Fist. Because I want a little bit of variation in the colors on the miniature. So you'll see at the moment, I'm not too worried about uh, a straight line here. I just want to make sure that I'm going to cover a little over where the black will join up. Once both of those have dried thoroughly, what I have is Black Legion. Now, I love Black Legion. You could also just use a traditional black acrylic here, because 
this is going to cover pretty well. So let's get them so we can actually see what's going on here. I'm going to paint one of these stripes. Oh, geez. Always gives me the willies getting to this bit. So take my time here, filling out these, the center stripe here. And as I get to the bottom of the stripe, it's going to be a little bit difficult to paint it without hitting uh, other stuff. So flip them upside down. It's much easier to reach the bottom of that area. Now on his shield, you can see that it's drying, uh, but unfortunately on his jacket that didn't go too well at all. I've made quite a few big splotches of black where I don't want black. So back to the Wraithbone. Boy oh boy, this is a fun process. Just tidy up what you need to. And with those little bits tidied up, he's starting to look more like a really well-armed Dortmund fan. And uh, as somebody who lives in Bayern, that's actually quite concerning. <laughs> Uh, what I've got now this is Gore Grunt of Fur, and I'm going to paint in the leather, uh, the straps across his chest, and also his belt. And I'm probably going to paint his codpiece with this as well. Just one color for all of these leather details. Make things nice and simple. And now we're getting somewhere. I'm going to go to Garagax Sewer and paint in the leather leggings that he's wearing. Now, this is one of those points where it's going to be easiest to. Try and keep your brush moving in the same direction as you apply this uh, to try and cut down on any brush strokes you might see. Don't worry too much if it's not perfect, but it shouldn't be too difficult just owing to how big they are. And if you hadn't noticed, I've also used that to paint in his hair and man those eyebrows. If there is one thing that I'm not a fan of personally, it's eyebrows on miniatures. They always look a little bit like Spooky hypnotists, but I'll take what I can get. <laughs> so I've got Wildwood now, and I'm going to use this to paint in his shoes. It's a bit darker than the uh, Garagax Sewer. Slightly different brown. Looks quite nice. You'll notice I'm not bothering to tidy up any little splatters first. Now, somehow I always get those mixed around, but Garagax Sewer is the darker one than Wildwood, so... Oh well, they still look a little different to each other. I've got Iron Hand Steel now, and I'm going to paint over his sword. Nice and quick and simple. And I'm also going to swap down to a smaller brush and paint in things like his buttons and any buckles that I feel like painting in silver. Now you could do his sword all in one color, but I have here Retributor Armor, and I'm going to paint in the cross guard in a nice gold color. Uh, you can also use this as the base for any brass buttons that you want to do. And looking at his doublet, I might do that with a smaller brush. Now, once we've reached this point, what I'm going to do is to shade him. And I'm going to shade the whole miniature except his face and hands. What I'm going to use, this is a half and half mix of Agrax Earthshade and Lamian Medium. Now, you could use the Agrax Earthshade straight, but that's going to give you a much darker finish. And I don't really want that. What I want is to get a little bit more shading, to dull the colors down just a little, and to bring some of them together a bit. Particularly on the sleeves here, you'll see how quickly that gives us slightly more interesting uh, faded pale linen color. So over the entire miniature, don't worry too much if you do happen to hit his hands or what have you, but take your time and try and avoid them if you can. Something that I always find really surprising about that mix is that it doesn't look very strong going on. But when at last it dries, it just brings everything together in a really nice way. It's not so dark that it's massively changed the colors, but everything does look a little bit more muted and, I hesitate to say it, but realistic. So from here, you could varnish them and put them on the table, but I do want to go a little bit further with some highlights. Now, you can go ahead and grab some acrylics to highlight your contrast, but what I'm going to do is actually mix paint into the contrast that we've used. So on my palette here, what I've got is four little dots of ivory from Vallejo. Now, you could use pallid witch flesh here instead. Uh, I just like... Uh, ivory is a little bit warmer. It's just nicer. So what I'm going to do is I've got here I and in yellow again. And I'm going to try and mix about half and half. Yeah, that looks about right. Uh, ivory and that color. So we get a nice 
syrupy sort of highlight color. Uh, now, if you think this looks a little too dark or too light, experiment with your mix ratio. You can always add more ivory as you go. And then grab yourself a nice fine brush and just pick a couple of parts on the miniature that I want to try and highlight to look a little more visually interesting. So on his jacket here, good candidate for this. Uh, this little crease. Yeah, basically at this point we're just highlighting them like we normally would. Now from the front that doesn't look like much yet, but if we flick him around you see I've had an opportunity there to add a little bit of depth to the back of his doublet, and that looks quite cool. So now I'm going to do the same thing, having mixed up some Gore Grunter fur and ivory. Again, roughly half and half, although I might have benefited, I think, at this point from a little bit more Gore Grunter fur. Let's just keep these highlights nice and small. And then again with snakebite leather. And then the Garagak sewer. Now this one wasn't a straight one-to-one, -one. I actually added a little bit more Garagak Sewer than I did for the others, because being such a dark colour, if we go one-to-one -one with Ivory, that's going to be ooh, not great. Now I did just start jumping straight to the shield, and here I'm using Wraithbone, uh, without mixing anything in. I always found it a really nice, sharp yellow highlight, so go nuts here if you fancy. And that Wraithbone will also use to highlight, well, his Wraithbone shirt. Don't need to do very much of this, just enough to catch the folds and the more extreme creases. When it comes to highlighting the black, you could mix Ivory into Black Legion, but the perfect color to do it already exists. So I'm going to use here Dawnstone and just pick a few little spots to highlight the black. At this point, once you've done most of your highlights, his skin is going to look super pale. So I've got some Reichland Flesh Shade, and we're going to go over all of his skin again with this to make it a little bit more red, give it a bit more warmth. And once that's dried and he's looking a little bit more lively, a mix of Gilliman Flesh and Ivory, same as all the other contrast highlights, will make him look just a bit more lively. Now, while painting his face, yes, I cheated and I did his eyes off screen. Just a little bit of ivory and some Black Legion. Um, I've done videos on painting eyes before and it's awfully fiddly on camera, so excuse me for sneaking that one in there, but I think he looks pretty cool. What I'm going to do now is to varnish him, and I'm going to do that before I highlight the metal, because I want the metal to, to stay quite shiny once it's varnished. Now the magic of a little varnish just evens all of that out so nicely. What I've got now is steel. This is from the Vallejo Model Air range, and you could use here instead Stormhost Silver, but I find this flows just a little bit more nicely off a brush. So let me get that at the right angle, there we go, and just using the edge of my brush, very lightly run it along to highlight some of the silver. You can, interestingly enough, also use this to highlight gold. Just little dings in the corner will look quite nice. And there, finally, he's ready for his base. So, of course, base him up to match what your table or the rest of your Mordheim warband is going to look like. I'm going to base him in the same way as I would for most of my other role-playing figures. So, I'll pop the recipe for that one in the description. Let's get a look at what he looks like when he is all done. And there at last, our henchman from Avaland is complete, and I had a lot of fun doing this. I think looking at the finished product, you would probably not immediately guess that most of his highlights are just mixing ivory into contrast. It's definitely something that I recommend having a play around with, and I tend to find that thinning out the shade and applying that over the top of the contrast will give you a pretty cool finish, and well, for once, I'm going to say, I think the results speak for themselves. <laughs> so thank you to Vevictus for letting me have the files for this one. Um, they didn't specifically ask if I would do a video, but I have shown off some of their stuff before, so it felt like it was appropriate. They were very kind to, to let me have the April release here, and uh, I've had a great time, so thank you again to them. 
Thank you as well to Exit 23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all of the wonderful patrons who are keeping me ticking in paints and glue, including my producers, Alan, Kyrie, Rod, Jimmy, Andrew, and Phil. Any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the old comment box below. My Twitter and Instagram are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time one and all, and you all enjoy the rest of your day.